Hello guys, welcome back. So in the previous video, we finished up the entire landing page uh, with the footer section. It was pretty cool. And now we are ready to go ahead and animate the navigation. So basically when you scroll, um, you know, uh, we get this kind of an animation. So how do we do this? It's uh, pretty simple. So let's get to it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a new div block, all right? Now the reason I'm creating that div block is because I want to put this navigation bar inside that div block. I don't want to touch the navigation bar at all. I want to go ahead and, you know, put another div block so it's easy for me. So I'm going to press command E, I'm going to call this div block and I'm going to call this uh, nav container. Nav wrapper actually, okay? And uh, I'm gonna put it above and I'm gonna put this nav bar inside this nav wrapper. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this nav wrapper and I'm gonna come here to the properties and in the position from static, I'm gonna change that to fixed. So as you can see in the description, it says fixed positions and element relative to the browser's window. So it stays fixed in a fixed place um, when the page, as the page is scrolled. So I'm gonna click on fixed. And now it's gonna do something and it's gonna mess things up. So uh, before you do anything, make sure that you choose one of these presets, which is top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, side uh, on the either sides and on the top. So I'm gonna click on top. And now as you can see, as I scroll down, you can see that it is stuck to the top, which is exactly what we want. But you can see there's uh, some issue about the spacing over here. So this is pretty much too close to the top. So let's fix that. There's also some spacing here on the top. So I'm gonna to go to the nav wrapper and here in the top margin, um, I'm gonna give it, or a padding, I'm gonna give it a padding of 50 pixels. So it pushes things down. And this hero section, I'm gonna bring that down as well. So I'm gonna give it quite a bit of margin. So probably 150 looks good. So yeah, I think 150 is a good number. So now this is how it kind of looks pretty good. All right, so now we can go ahead and actually create the interaction. So what you wanna do is you wanna hop in over to the interactions tab, and this is where we have all the interactions. Now there are too many things when it comes to interaction, so we're gonna go very slowly, and you know, I hopefully uh, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna go very slowly and explain every single thing. So there are two types of interactions. One is an element trigger and one is a page trigger. So basically if I click on the plus icon, you can see we have five types of element trigger, which is mouse click, mouse hover, hover mouse over element, scroll into view or while scrolling into view. All right, now all these have different use cases. When it comes to page trigger, it it's things like page loading, mouse movement in the viewport, page scrolling and while the page is scrolling. All right, so you can see here, animate when the page scrolls up and down. But in this case, um, we want it to trigger an animation only when a certain part of the screen is visible, all right? So to explain further, let me actually go start building this interaction. So I'm gonna select this hero div, oh wait, oh, that we have, so the hero section, and I'm gonna choose scroll into view, all right? And now we get this new layout, and couple of things that we wanna do. We wanna create an animation when this hero section is scrolled into view, that's the first one. And the other one is what is the animation that's gonna happen when the hero section is scrolled out of the view. So right now, at this moment, the hero section is in the view. So we wanna trigger an animation that happens when the hero section is scrolled out of view. So I'm gonna click on this one and I'm gonna choose start an animation. Now you could obviously use a lot of these different types of preset that are there, but I always go with a custom one cause I would kind of never use any of these. So click on start an animation. Okay, and once you do that, we wanna click on this plus to create our own custom animation. So just click on that. And now we have this new tab and now we gotta take things a little bit slow. So I'm gonna click on this plus icon and I'm gonna choose what are the properties that I want to effect. Now I can effect the hero section or I can effect any other element, all right? So in this case, I don't want to effect the hero section, but I wanna effect this nav bar element. So there are two things I wanna change. One is the background color, which is the BG color, and the other one is the position, cause I want to move the elements to the top. So let's start with the movement first. So I'm gonna click on move. And as you can see, 
it's selected the hero section, but I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna choose change target, and I'm gonna click on the nav wrapper, all right? That is the element that I want to move. So I'm gonna come down here to the Y, and I'm gonna set this to negative 40, okay? So we have the nav wrapper, and I'm setting this to negative 40. I'm also gonna go change the easing to ease out, and also the duration is gonna be 0.3 seconds, all right? Now, nothing is happening, it's still not making any sense. But before I show you uh, it in action, I'm gonna add another property, which is the background color. Now, uh, here I'm gonna go ahead and set this to ease out. Uh, we're gonna set this to 0 0.3, and the color is going to be black, all right? Black, now you still can't see anything. Now, over here, this is the timeline that we have. At the first frame, or at zero seconds, we have the movement, and we also want the background color also to animate along with the movement. We don't want them to happen one after the other. We want them to happen together. So I'm gonna select this BG color, and then I'm gonna drag it in, and now as you can see, this animation starts with the previous action. And what is the previous action? The previous action is this nav bar movement, all right? So if I go here to this and let's take a look, you can see that we have this animation that's happened. This is exactly what we wanted, all right? Now, maybe minus 40 is a bit too much, so probably we can set that to a probably minus uh, 35, and let's check it out, so... Yeah, maybe we wanna set this to probably minus 45 because we want it to be proper and exact. So yeah, that looks pretty good, minus 45. Um, well, another thing that we can do is we can actually take the nav wrapper and come over here and give it a little bit of an inner padding of let's say a 10 pixel, I don't know, just like a small number, all right? And uh, that, that's, looking, that's looking pretty good. You know, in my opinion, that looks pretty good. If you take a look over here, um, it's pretty close, you know? Like, you know, it's pretty close and um, I think that's fine. So maybe we could go ahead and tweak this to be a bit perfect. So I'm gonna set that to five instead of 10. And uh, let's check it out. There you go, I think that looks pretty good. Now we also want some opacity so that here, as you can see, you can see through the background. So I'm gonna select that and uh, let's go back to the interactions. So make sure you have the hero section selected. Go to the interactions tab, we're gonna click Click on this, and Leo, let's rename this. So this is going to be transparent to black, okay? And here, the BG color, we can actually just change this to 80% opacity, and uh, that should be good enough. Great. So basically, what we have done now is I've created an animation. So as I, as I scroll, we have this animation that happens. But what happens when I come back? Because... I want this to be normal when I reach the top of the page, right? You know, I want it to be normal. So basically, we're gonna add an animation to the hero section when this comes into view, what happens? Because right now, this animation is happening, this transparent to black animation is happening when I'm scrolling out of the view. But what happens when I scroll into view, all right? So with this hero section, I'm gonna choose when scrolled into view, I'm gonna choose start an animation, I'm going to actually create a new animation and this is going to be black to transparent okay and we're going to create a movement and we're going to go create a background color so we want these to be together because we want both of these both of these parameters to be animated at the same time not one after the other so i'm going to select the hero section right click change target select this and then oh not the nav bar uh, we want to change the nav bar wrapper and right click, change target, and the nav bar wrapper. So the movement, I'm going to set that to uh, zero. And the background color, I'm going to set that to um, black. And then we can set the opacity of this to zero. All right. And now it should work perfectly. And also, we can go ahead and change the easing settings. So I'm going to choose something like ease out and probably a duration of 0 0.15 and let's take a look and see how this works. All right, so we scroll down. All right, there we go, that moves into place. We scroll back up and it goes back away. All right, so that's pretty cool. So if you do it faster, it looks much better. And yeah. Now, if you feel that as I'm scrolling up, you know, the animation happens so fast, uh, we can offset it a little bit. So what I'm trying to say is if I close this, 
Here, this offset, I can actually change the offset, which is more of like a delay. It's going to happen uh, after a certain point of time. So if I say, let's say 40% delay, and let's check it out. So I scroll and I scroll back in. It doesn't scroll immediately, as you can see. It doesn't scroll immediately. It scrolls after a certain point of time, right? So that's what we want. Maybe you want to change it. Let's say we want it to say 75% offset. So let's scroll down, all right? And now I scroll up, up even a bit more, and then it kind of changes. So I've set a certain amount of delay. All right, let's check it out one more time. So I scroll down, all right, it's perfect. And I scroll back up and you know, it comes back to its original state, which is amazing. Now, one more thing that we need to do is we need to add in um, these uh, hover animations uh, to these elements. So, you know, let's quickly do that. Shouldn't take, uh, much of time. So um, with this navigation link selected, I'm not going to go to the interactions because we can do this just on hover because these are very simple interactions. I'm going to go ahead and click on hover. But before I do that, um, let's actually go select the navigation link and in the radius, I'm going to give it around 20 pixel uh, radius. Now you can't see it because it has a transparent background. So uh, I'm going to go to the states, go to hover and here in the hover, I am going to go and change the color of the background to be black, which is exactly what we need. And also I am going to, uh, actually we need it to be white, okay? And the text color is going to become complete black, which is what we want. And also we're gonna have some box shadow. Uh, so let's set that to 180 degrees. We've got a distance of uh, 10, a blur of 20, and uh, the color of black, probably 20% or maybe 35%, something subtle like so, all right? And it works on all these as well, all right? Because these have the same classes applied to it. But one thing we wanna do is go to the transform and, oh, sorry, not transform, sorry. Uh, the transitions, set that to all properties and, you know, give it a nice ease, all right? So if you take a look, maybe we can change uh, the easing to probably around 300 milliseconds. Let's check it out. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but it's too thick. So one thing we can do is we can select the navigation link and here we can reduce the top padding to 10 and the bottom padding also to 10. So, you know, it's kind of a bit closer. Let's check it out. Yeah, um, I think the rounding is too much. So what we can do is probably reduce the rounding um, from 20 to 10, all right? Let's check it out now. Yeah, that looks so much better. We wanna do the same thing for this as well. So let's go ahead, select the button, go to the states, go to hover, and we're gonna change the color to white. Um, we're gonna go and change the color of the text to black, and we gotta add the uh, box shadow. So 180, distance 10, blur 20, and the color uh, is I think I think 35% is what we chose and uh, that should be pretty good. Uh, let's go to the transitions, go to the all properties, um, 300 milliseconds and uh, that should be pretty good to go. All right, so this is exactly what we need. Okay, now you can also see that the elements actually move up a little bit. Um, so if you want, we can actually do that also. So, um, here, I'm actually gonna set the padding to 10 and the padding to 10 here as well. All right, just to make sure that all of these have the same height. Um, so let's select the navigation links and in the hover state, we want to give it a transform and move it up a bit. So maybe negative five pixels, all right? Okay, maybe negative three pixels, maybe five is too much, okay? And we could do the same thing for this also, select the button, go to the hover state, um, transform, and then negative three, all right? And if you take a look, it looks pretty good. So let's just get out of the hover state in the normal state. And yeah, it looks really nice. So now that our website is almost ready, it's almost done, but the problem is it doesn't look right on a desktop breakpoint on a landscape view and over a mobile view. So in the next video, we're gonna learn how to make it responsive and so that it looks beautiful on any device that you look at the website on. So I'll see you guys in the next video.